Tennessee has not played well in its past two games. That's been very obvious. Caleb has argued that one of them may have been intentional, and he may be right. Maybe two, Caleb says. I would disagree on Kentucky. Whatever the reason, you want shots to fall. You want to be smooth and crisp. So how important is it for Tennessee to blow out the Peacocks? Not just beat the Peacocks, but blow out the Peacocks. I think they really want to get a giant blowout involved. And what I mean by that is, you don't want to grind before the second round. That part's obvious. But the other part is they want to get their their rhythm back shooting the ball. Because I will say if there's one concern of them doing what I said they should do, and they did it. I don't care what anybody says. I think it's that they're out of rhythm shooting. So I think they want to, they want to try to find that feel again, kind of that flow. And so I th- and if they do, they will absolutely obliterate St. Peter's. So because of that. I think it's relatively important for them to blow out St. Peter's. It also is the perfect type of way to ease back into like basketball mode, which they really haven't been in for two weeks now. And so I think that getting a blowout helps them in a lot of ways. Now, look, theoretically, winning a grind fest still helps them in a few ways because it gets their feet wet. It gets them, you know, if you have to eke out a victory, you're still it does put you back in rhythm. But it also takes away potential for just a little bit more rest before you have to go play a either Texas or Colorado State on Saturday. I don't think it's that important just because based off my history of covering basketball when I did so extensively, I've seen both. I've seen Tennessee come out bad in the first round and play well in the second round. I've seen them play well and blow teams out and then lay a big egg in the second round. So I'm going to go historically, Caleb, and disagree with you a little bit. Now, something to be said for shots falling and getting your rhythm. I think you're you're right on track with that. But I don't know that Tennessee has to win by 25 or 30 points to feel good about themselves going into the next round. I think it's more about, yeah, I think it's more about getting the shots to fall so they can be in rhythm going into the next round. And if they get the shots to fall, I mean, Dave, this won't be a game done. Like, if Tennessee's shots fall, it's going to be a blowout. St. Peter's is not that good of a team. No, they're not good. Tennessee should blow them out. That old S word that we use from time to time, should, can get you in trouble. I think that That people expect Tennessee to blow St. Peter's out. If they don't, then everybody's going to go back to regular season Rick, who I wrote in a column that I can't help but root for and you mentioned this kind of team we're not going to do a full-blown preview this is the kind of team that Tennessee theoretically wouldn't match up with against if if they had elite talent but they don't they try to do the things that bother Tennessee but they're just not big enough and athletic enough to be able to really give them a hard time tonight I, I don't believe this will be close I Now, the question I'll ask you now, is it a red flag for you personally if they don't come out and play at a high level? Remind you that portions of the program are brought to you by Boundless Moving from their two-hour minimum to turnkey operations. They have you covered. Their motto, personal service without limits, not just a tagline. It's part of who they are. It's in their DNA, Boundless Moving. Check them out there in East Tennessee and North Carolina. Boundless moving. They move me. They can move you. Red flag if the balls don't play well, don't win big tonight, Caleb, or is it just, hey, that's the tournament. That's how things go. No, it's a red flag at that point because of the way the strategy they had last week in their tank job against Mississippi State. Because I told everybody, don't worry, Tennessee tanked against Mississippi State. But what did I say, Dave? I said, the way they tanked which was Rick Barnes said, don't fight for buckets under the basket. We're going to live by the three, die by the three. If the shots don't fall, we it's fine. We'll just take the loss. The shots didn't fall. Okay, fine. Um, if they don't fall again today, then you're going to start thinking something's wrong with this team right now. Well, and I can tell you what I, I would think that that would be. That would be that they started leaning too much on Dalton Connect and got a little bit out of rhythm. That's if they struggle tonight. Because I'm kind of with you. I don't don't think they played their best for Kentucky. You and I differ on the reasons. 
I think there's a very good chance they placed a low emphasis on the SEC tournament. But if shots don't start falling tonight and they don't get in rhythm and it's a close game and they get bounced from this tournament, I can already tell you my argument is that they leaned on Dalton Connect a little bit too much and got themselves out of rhythm uh, and got guys out of uh, out of the rotation uh, and uncomfortable in this new offense. That's going to be my argument at least. But I think Tennessee, who uh, some of you have going to the Final Four, and one of my brackets I do as well. No, I don't fill out two brackets. But uh, I think that in order to make that, they're going to have to uh, prove that they can hit a lot of shots to make the Final Four. They can't go out there and, and play like they played the, like the last two games for whatever reason that was. No, no, they absolutely can't. That's a very good point. They um, that look on the surface, I think they they win this game easily. If you guys ask me, I think that there's a very good chance they cover. Look, St. Peter's is a. I, I can't stress this enough. They're not equipped to be good in the NCAA tournament. There are lower seeds that are equipped to be dangerous in the NCAA tournament. St. Peter's isn't one of them, and so I, I think that Tennessee should handle them fairly easily and for all of Rick Burns tournament flaws in the first round against these type of teams he almost always wins he didn't he, he I don't know to, I don't know of a time where he's been upset by a team like this in the first round now, he has in the second round when he lost to Loyola Chicago a few years ago when Loyola Chicago made that final four run because of sister Jean and oh my gosh if I see her one more time um but <laughs> Caleb hashtag I hate nuns <laughs> <laughs> I don't um no and and let's okay let me ask you this if it's not rick barnes if it's bob smith and please hit that like and subscribe button we want to bring some more people in here get the conversation going we appreciate you we really do um if if if, if it's not rick barnes is this a team that is made for a deep tournament run, if it's Bob Smith that's the head coach, are you talking about Tennessee as one of those teams that has? What do we always say? Last 10 games, we say guard play. We say, you know, we say the same things. Ability to hit shots. I think this team, with the exception of Rick Barnes, is a team that's put together to go deep in the tournament. And I mentioned that when Dalton started to emerge in December, January, that the other factor is you've got a guy you can go to for a sure two. But I think this team, with the exception of having a head coach who struggles in the postseason, is well built for a tournament run and a deep one. There is one other huge factor, though, which is that I I, I agree. I agree. I think this team is, but it's not just Rick, Bar Rick Barnes. I think it's just the Tennessee the mentality of playing for Tennessee. Look, I've said this before. You watched it with you see it with Tennessee and Florida in football the history of failure creeps into the players' minds a lot of times if you're on campus. Is that fair to say, Dave, whatever sport you play? A little bit. I, more than the NFL. I hate it when people talk about trends in the NFL, like the Redskins have won eight – I'm sorry, we're not allowed to call them that. Uh, the Commanders have won 18 of 20 against the Cowboys. Well, I mean, a lot of those guys were still in high school. So – yeah, and you're not around the community as much. You're more insulated, but you have to go to class back and forth. So I'm sure you hear about the pressure. I'm sure. Yeah, there's a reason Kentucky can never beat Tennessee in football. I mean, Caleb, no matter what the difference. Is. Yeah, Caleb. I mean, if you played for them and I was your buddy, I mean, wouldn't I say at some point, "Hey, man, what's this Rick Barnes do do doing late in seasons that causes you to collapse?" And then you're thinking about it, and then there's more pressure. So, yes, I think you can organically have pressure on you from being on campus, which is different from any professional league. Uh, Tennessee, St. Peter's will be tonight a 920 kick. Our coverage will be incredible tonight. What all we got going, Caleb? You guys want to have an immediate recap? We have a preview coming out today. We'll definitely, we will, we will be live after the show wins. So, or after the game, game ends, excuse me. After the game ends. So come right here. It will be 1125. We may be tired, but we will be on with you. So come join us. Come hang with us tonight right after the game. We'll talk about it. If Tennessee wins, if they want to blow out like I think they should, if they want a close one, or if they get upset, we'll be on to talk about it. Yep. So click that like and subscribe button. A lot of you may not have your notifications on, but do that to make sure 
that you're able to take part in some of our post-game coverage. And we have a whole lot of fun, and it'll be a lot about you and your reaction to Tennessee, who, for the record, what is the point spread on this, Caleb? Have you heard a number on that? Uh, Rocky I believe at US. I believe it is 19. Let me confirm that. I think I can confirm it now. Um, the Oh, no, it's up to 21 and a half. Tennessee yeah. 21 and a half at a total of 130.5. So we're talking like, yeah, they're, 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 they're seeing exactly what I'm seeing in this game. Tennessee's going to win this game about 80 to 50. 